Welcome to the Gold Cup Day Whirlpool Preview. Some call it Ladies' Day. Maddie Playl from the Racing Post is looking fabulous. I'm going to call that Navy. Simon Mapletoff looking dapper as ever. Big day. Seven races, huge fields, enormous betting opportunities. Let's start with race one. It is the two-year-olds, 1,000 metres. It is the Norfolk Stakes. Let's have a look down the card. I think key players at the top and bottom of this race card. Asterius, very impressive first time out. Arizona Blaze has been up against some of the sharpest horses in Ireland. Further down the card, Shareholder, once race, impressive at Beverly. And down the bottom, I think two key players, Whistle Jacket has looked very good for Aidan O'Brien. And Saturday Flirt, Wesley Ward has won this race twice, and she was impressive on her debut. Bear in mind one thing here, the last two winners of the Norfolk Stakes have been 50 to 1, and get this, 150 to 1 this time 12 months ago. So nothing can be taken for granted, but I'd like to think we can take for granted a really bold performance from a horse called Whistle Jacket here, Simon. Yes, he, he's a, an awesome individual, really takes the eye, a lovely son of, of Nona Never, and uh, he's made a, a good impression already. Of, of course, he's, uh, he's one of the current uh, enlisted company. Impressive performance, but that form was franked in handsome style. By Arizona Blaze. These two horses lock horns again. Would you expect Whistle Jacket to confirm the form, Maddie? I think I would. Arizona Blaze, he was out very early in the season for Ammo Racing and, and Whistle Jacket slightly later is now probably just overtaking him slightly in terms of progress. Um, I think he's got the physique to be a real bull of a sprinter and I'm looking forward to seeing him. I think we can safely say that it's it's in the Ascot blood for Whistle Jacket. His sire is known ain't ever, who won this race for Wesley Ward 2013, I think. And he's out of the dam who gave us Little Big Bear, high-class sprinter who won at Royal Ascot a couple of years ago. Whistle Jacket and Arizona Blaze, key players here. We touched on outsiders, 50 to 1, 150 to 1 in the last two renewals. I don't think we'll get 50 or 150 for your selection here, Maddie. but you like a, a horse at a price. I do, yeah. Michael O'Callaghan's a very shrewd trainer. He's had some horses run very well at Royal Ascot, and he runs Evening Saigon here. He won at Tipperary in pretty soft conditions in really nice style. I think the better ground of this Norfolk Stakes will suit him. We'll see an improved performance. Michael actually won that race with Twilight Jet, who was a very smart sprinter of his. And I just think we can expect a big step up from this horse. He's going under the radar. Keep your eye on him. Never be scared of an outsider. I want to take you to Keeneland now. Wesley Ward has won this race, I think twice, no nay never, and Shang Shang Shang. This time he chooses a filly. Saturday Fleur, and do not adjust your sets. This is a Wesley Ward two-year-old who wins without making all. In fact, she missed a break and was patiently ridden at Keeneland, but she came through with a powerful, powerful charge and won with plenty in hand. I think she's likely to run a good race here. Wesley Ward has pedigree in the Norfolk. Plenty of other options here, Simon. I know you like a horse who won at Beverly first time. Yes, shareholder for Carl Burke, who uh, runs in the Wathenan Racing Colours, cost 460000 guineas at the uh, at the breeze ups and look the real deal in a race as you know graham has been a very good pointer uh, for pattern racers as the season has gone on very professional on debut uh, as you'd often expect with a breeze up horse and carl burke i know is very sweet on his chances and in the same colors asterius has to be given a positive mention that is the norfolk stakes almost all wrapped up numbers please simon well, it's got to be Whistle Jacket for me. I think he will be the real deal. Uh, number 13, then Whistle Jacket, the winner. And for the placings, number 10, Shareholder. Number 2, Arizona Blaze. And number 14, Saturday Flirt. Uh, yeah, true to form, Graham. I'm taking a bit of a flyer. Number 5, Evening Saigon for me, followed by 1, 7 and 13. I think Ireland have a handle on this, possibly with a bit of American input as well. 13, Whistle Jacket. 2, Arizona Blaze. 1, Asterius. And 14, Saturday Flirt in a hell for leather Norfolk Stakes. Race two, day three at Royal Ascot is a big time handicap. It's the King George V handicap. It's a middle distance race, 2,400 meters on the round course. All sorts of well-bred progressive horses on show here. Down the card, Persica carries top weight for a good reason. He's got high quality form. Sean T ran extremely well in one of the best handicaps of the season so far. Going the distance was impressive at Kempton. Gilded water, could it be hats off for the king and queen for the second year in a row in this race? Pony Ross 
Ralph Beckett, Rafe Beckett has a very strong hand here. 4 1 0 Fever is a multiple winner and gallantly adds further strength to a very powerful Aidan O'Brien team here. Where should we start? Well, let's start with a couple of videos. I think these two horses will be big prices, but they both have some pretty solid Ascot form. We'll pick up on the City Burglar, first of all. This was a mine and a quarter, and we pick up City Burglar staying on really well. The winner and the third have both run well since. It is solid form, but this race, I think, fair to say, much deeper than that one. Then we pick up on Warder Jamila. This is a mile and a quarter Phillies handicap here at Ascot, and she's emphatic. She runs very, very strongly to the line. I think a mile and a half should suit, but she's been to Hamilton since then, and she wasn't quite good enough. A couple of long shots there, but then let's move into perhaps the more fancied horses. I'll start with you, Maddie. Give me one or two horses who you're really keen to see here. Well, the main one um, is going to be a case of hopefully history repeating itself. That's what Royal Ascot is all about. I'm really keen on Gilded Water here for last year's winning team, uh, the King and Queen, William Haggis and Tom Marquand. This is a horse who's been a slow burner. He was third in a good novice at Windsor, but last time upped in trip to 10 furlongs, he left that form way behind at Chepstow, stretched really nicely clear, totally dominated that opposition. And he's been given, I think, a workable opening mark. This is a horse who is a half-brother to a two-mile Group 1 Sydney Cup winner in Circle of Fire. So I think he's going to keep improving as he goes up in distance and as he's given time. William Haggis is a master at improving these handicappers throughout the year. I think he can do it again, Graham. OK, that's your bid for a dame, Hood. Give me one more name that we need to consider here. I think that London Gold Cup form is key. Uh, Persica and Shanti are two really, really strong horses. I think it'll pay to follow those as well. Simon? Well, Shanti, of course, for Aidan O'Brien, was behind Poneros at, uh, at Newbury. And Rafe Beckett's horse, a son of Golden Horn, looks as though he will really improve for stepping up in trip. He was doing all of his best work in the closing stages. And I expect David Egan to get a really good tune out of him. Uh, and... Uh, Handicapping for the first time, French Duke for Roger Verian, a horse who's lacking experience, a very good-looking son of See the Stars, but the way he ran uh, on the back of a break at Newbury last time suggests that he's ready for this mile-and-a-half test. He looked a really powerful galloper. He, he, he stormed clear, didn't he? He could be a fun horse to watch. All about stamina. I'm with O'Brien and Beckett here. I think they both have very strong hands. Sean T just comes from a really, really deep handicap uh, at Newbury. Going the distance was impressive at Kempton. Poneros, high-quality handicap form, as outlined. And Gallantly, a son of Galileo, who was pretty decisive at Chester. Numbers, please. This is a brain burner of a handicap, Simon. It's a tough one, but it's number eight, Poneros, for me. And for the placings, number four, going the distance, uh, improving horse, number 12, French Duke, and number three, Shanti. Yeah, we all like the look of going the distance for a place, don't we? But it's six, Gilded Water, on top for me, followed by four, one, and three. Aidan O'Brien has won this only once. I'd like to think he might do it again uh, on Gold Cup Day. I'm going to go with Sean T, number three, four going the distance, eight Pony Ross and 13 Gallantly. The very best of British and Irish in the big handicap. Well, some people still call day three at Royal Ascot Ladies Day. High class females on show, three-year-old fillies for the group two Ribblesdale Stakes, middle distance contest of high quality. It is 2,400 metres on the round course. And one of the key metrics here, Aidan O'Brien and John Gosden and his son Thady between them have won eight of the last 10 renewals. And I think they have five of the 13 runners this year. Let's go down a few. Danielle is useful and progressive for the Gosdens. Diamond Rain looks one of Godolphin's best chances of the week. Boris Ferry has smart form. Kalpana, keep a close eye on her. She's got better and better this spring. Queen Sport is another Gosden project. Rubies are red, is a tricky customer for Aiden. Ciola for the Gosdens down at the bottom, number 12. And you got to me for Rafe Beckett, who ran so well in Classic Company in the Oaks last time. Let's pick up straight away on Diamond Rain here. She's very, very well bred. She's two from two. Let's pick her up first time out in a slowly run novice race here at Ascot in May. Visually, it doesn't look that flash, but when you realize that she was green slowly away and trying to run into a very steady pace, there were lots to like about this. And that's the thing, Graham. This is over just a mile. She stepped up at Newbury the next time to win the listed trial in really impressive style. 
as you mentioned, very well bred out of the Oaks winner Dancing Rain. So you'd expect her to keep improving with racing. I think she could be a cut above her rivals here. She's unbeaten. I fancy her to maintain that record. I think we could see a bit of star quality from her. That Newbury success was another sit sprint race. She's really fast, this filly, no question about it. Is she guaranteed to thrive over a mile and a half, Simon? Well, it's not guaranteed. She's trying this for the first time. She's by Shamadol, which could raise a, a question mark. But as Maddie said, she's out of Dancing Rain and won the Oaks in 2011. So there's plenty of stamina on the Distaff side. Um, what I like about this horse is on debut in the listed race as well at Newbury last time, despite inexperience, despite greenness, she's got the job done. And uh, I think she'll be, as long as experience doesn't count against her here, I think she'll relish the trip and she's the one they're all going to beat. One more quick video to look at. This filly will be a double figure price, I think. But she's trained by the Gosdens. You have to respect her. This is Queen's Fort. Um, like the favourite, she made her debut here at Ascot. It was a slowly run race, a maiden race, a dash to the finish, and she shaped well in four. Since when, she's gone to mate, uh, Linkfield and won a maiden in pretty tidy style. But I think if there's a, a serious danger to the Godolphin filly here, I think could be Colpana, Simon. I think she's made really good progress out of handicaps into group races. I like her chances. What do you think? Yeah, we, we saw this horse run really well at the Craven meeting and I think really confirmed a form and promise on that occasion for uh, Andrew Balding. Uh, and then finished second in listed company at Newbury. OK, was beaten, but it was another strong run. And I like the fact that although she didn't win, she was well clear of the rest. And that was a good sign. I think she's going to relish uh, a mile and a half Kalpana here. Plenty of others we could mention, Matty. Uh, any long shots we should keep an eye on? Um, I think the Oaks form is going to be key to watch during this. Uh, you got to me fourth at Epsom. Really strong effort. She's very straightforward, Philly. Tends to produce her best every time. Uh, Danielle, who was behind you, got to me at Lingfield. I think this more conventional track will suit her. I think we'll see a much better performance from her. And then Forest Ferry, another who won an Oaks trial at Chester this time. I think we can expect better than we saw from her in the Oaks. I like Danielle. I think she tries really hard and that should stand her in good stead. This is the Ribblesdale Stakes and this is Simon Mapletoff's first four. Yep. Uh, number two, Diamond Rain for me and for the placings, number six, 13 and one. Yeah, two for me as well. Diamond Rain on top, followed by 13, 1 and 3. William Buick says Diamond Rain is still nowhere near the finished article. That's true, and she's going to improve further. The others are in trouble here, but I'm going to take a chance on, I think, the more likely stamina of Kalpana here. Don't think there'll be much between these two fillies, and I am pretty keen on both. But I'm going to go on top six Kalpana, two Diamond Rain, one Danielle, and 13. You got to me. That's the Ribblesdale, all wrapped up. For many people, the Gold Cup is the highlight of the week at Royal Ascot. The day three showpiece is historic and it is a marathon. Two and a half miles, 4,000 meters, and it features some world-class stairs. Let's have a look down the card. Coltrane has a super, super Royal Ascot record. Enemy is talented, but a long shot in this field. Kiprios was dynamite in this race two years ago. He's had his injury problems, but he's two from two in 24. Sweet William is on the rise. Trawlerman is one of very few horses who've beaten Kiprios. Further down, Trushan probably needs some rain. Vauban was dynamite in the Copper Horse last year. Gregory, also one at Royal Ascot. And Keys Chorister is a high quality filly. All sorts of options here. I think we've got five really strong video clips to show you. It makes perfect sense to start with the 22 Gold Cup. And the question is, Kiprios, is he still the same horse, Simon, that he was on this day two years ago? Well, on this day, he was scintillating, wasn't he? And uh, the victory was expected. He put them to the sword in great style. Uh, and then, of course, went on to prove what a, a wonderful stare he is at Goodwood and, and out, out in France as well. Uh, he has had issues since. He's been sympathetically returned to the track this year. Two fairly low-key runs uh, over shorter trips. But I think I'll be, he'll be primed. And uh, if... His injuries aren't too much of an issue for him at six. He could be in his prime. Maddie, have you seen enough to suggest that the old Kiprios is back this year? I'm not quite sure I have, Graham. He's a very, very talented horse and he can still operate at an incredibly high level. But I just wonder, pitched into these sort of waters against this calibre of opposition, whether he'll be able to reproduce quite those heights. He's definitely going to be a key player, though. Remember that guy, Frankie de Tori? Used to be quite good round here. I think he rode Gregory last year in the Queen's Mars. Gregory is a, a potential danger, I think. 
Massively, I think. Um, the Queen's Vars last year was an incredible effort and he was still a work in progress at that stage. Ended the campaign with a fifth in the St. Ledger, of course. Again, just shaping as if he needed some more time and he's had that over the winter. We saw him return in the Doncaster Cup behind Giovalotto. That was an eye-catching effort with this race in mind. Stamina is key for Gregory. I think he's got it in spades. I think he's really going to improve for this extra four furlongs. We can't be sure that the next horse we're going to look at will stay two and a half miles. But if he does, he's going to be exciting. Let's look back to the Copper Horse Handicap 12 months ago. This horse, Vauban, for William Mullins, was backed as if there was no settling day. And when do you see a, a real top handicap, one in this style? He was absolutely devastating. He ended up favourite for the Melbourne Cup. He didn't shine there. But it looks like he's been primed with a Gold Cup in mind, Simon. I, I like him for a place. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, of course, uh, back in the Copper Horse, uh, he was laid out for that. And his trainer doesn't leave those behind very often. Uh, so uh, he did that in the manner he was expected. This is altogether a very different kind of test. He, uh, of course, did bomb out uh, in the Melbourne Cup. It was very disappointing. Uh, but I think his prep run over slightly shorter in the Yorkshire Cup should have him spot on. He's to be respected. A yes or no answer, please, Maddie. Will Vauban stay the Gold Cup trip? I think he will. Positive words for Vauban. Remember that guy, Frankie de Tori? He used to be pretty good around here. He was absolutely tremendous on Champions Day, in the mud, on Trawler Man. This is a key galloping clue. Trawler Man was given a superb ride by de Tori. Kiprios came to call, but de Tori had saved something. Sweet William was also in the mix that day. How strong is this form, given that the ground this week is going to be much softer than it was last October? Much yeah, faster than October. Well, a couple of factors, of course, very different ground. Uh, and that man, Frankie de Tori, who gave us an absolute masterclass, didn't he? The way he, he dictated that race. Um, of course, Frankie's not going to be on board this time. But I do like this horse. I think he's got more to offer. It wasn't a bad run in the Dubai Gold Cup. He had a very wide draw, didn't get a very good trip and couldn't really get into the race. But uh, I thought he acquitted himself well. And uh, I think in better conditions, he could still have more to offer. Again, he's got to be in the mix. Last but not least, the mighty Coltrane, who's got a terrific Ascot record. And with headgear applied, he was back on song in the Cigar Oil Stakes. A key galloping clue, Coltrane gets the better of Keys Chorister and Sweet William. Yeah, some really interesting form this, given Sweet William since uh, beat Keys Chorister at Sandown. I really fancy Keys Chorister to come out best on top of these three. She was so keen in this race. We see at Ascot the Cigar Oil Stakes. She's really learning how to race over staying trips now. She's proved she stays two miles so they can ride her with more confidence. She's unexposed compared to some of these others. The more I look at this year's Gold Cup, the more intriguing it becomes. I'm not super confident, Simon. Are you? Not super confident. It all depends for a number of these horses, just uh, if they get the run of the race, how it all pans out. There could be all sorts of possibilities. I'm going to be with Kiprios. I, I, I like the horse. I, I think he's been very skillfully handled on his return. Uh, he'll be prime for today, and if he, he turns up, as we know he can, he's going to be the one they've all got to beat. So it's number three, Kiprios, for me. For the placers, I'm going to go with Trawler Man, number six, uh, Coltrane, number one in there as well, and, of course, number nine, Gregory, to make the frame. Yeah, well, Gregory's on top for me, Graham. I just think this will be his moment. It'll be his big day, followed by eight, Vauban, three, Kiprios, and ten, Keith Chorister. A bit like Simon, I'm not super confident, but we know he has the class, and most importantly of all, we know he stays forever. So it's three, Kiprios on top, ahead of one, Coltrane, eight Volban and nine Gregory for what should be a thriller of a Gold Cup. Race five, day three, it is the Britannia handicap. We can rely on certain things. It is the straight 1600 meters. It's a huge field. It's tons of progressive forces, various Hong Kong contenders in the mix here, possible draw bias and a wide open market. Down the card with some fascinating horses. King's Gamble has group race form. Star Law was an eye catcher at Goodwood last time. Involvement did really well to finish second in a hot contest at Haydock. Watcher Matey has been thriving from the front. Further down the card, number 20, Arctic Thunder has good ascot form. Volterra was very impressive at Newmarket. Mickley, likewise at Doncaster, strong improver in some Hong Kong silks. And Skokuza was second to Volterra at Newmarket and has gone one better since. Quick video clip. It's Ascot Form, it's Arctic Thunder and Dragon Leader finishing first and third. Worthy performances from both horses, both staying on willingly. But again, I think it's fair to say that both these horses are in way, way deeper 
this Thursday. Let's pick up on a few likely lads and maybe lasses here. Simon, give us a feel uh, for your fancies here. Well, a horse that caught my eye at Doncaster recently, although he was sent off odds on and didn't win, was the Rafe Beckett horse King's Gamble, number one, who uh, showed his class when he was third in the gym crack last year on his second start. He lacked experience, but it was a really good run over the six furlongs. He stepped up to seven at Doncaster. For me, in the paddock, he just looked a little bit on the burly side, carrying a bit of condition, and uh, Danny Tudhope did report afterwards that he, he did need the race. They step up to a mile here. He's got the class, and I think he can do the job. Maddie, it's wide, wide open. I think you've got one at a price here. It is. Uh, I think it could go to a Hong Kong owner, potentially, Graham. And Mr. Stu, um, who's purchased Mickley from Ed Bethel's stable. This horse, another Doncaster form line coming into question here, was really impressive on softer conditions. He's by Soldier's Call, who won the Windsor Castle here on fast ground. I think the better conditions of Ascot will suit him. We just haven't scratched the surface with this horse yet. He's just getting better and better. I think we could see an improved performance in this big, bustling handicap. You know when you think you've found one that's flying nicely under the radar, then your partner spotted it as well. I echo everything that Maddie has said about Mickley. The kid's quite an interesting move that the Sioux family have bought this horse before he runs into Britannia. Because if he runs really well, and I think he will, then the price tag is likely to rise appreciably. That is a live, live horse. Any more we should mention here in a super difficult handicap, Simon? Well, definitely, very quickly. Uh, Native Warrior, who made all to win at Nottingham for Carl Burke. Uh, that was a polished performance. Prior to that, he'd run a good race behind Notable Speech, who went on to win the, uh, the Guineas, of course. So he's got to be in the mix. Uh, and a horse called Kirad as well. Uh, another Ray Beckett horse who uh, really has begun to progress since being gelded and I think will be in the mix as well. Give me your numbers before we move on to Maddie's selections. Well, it's number one King's Gamble for me here. Uh, number 25, 19 and 18 for the places. Simon's covered some of the others I was going to mention, Graham. It's 23, Mickley on top, followed by 25, 19 and 3. This is tough, but we both like Mickley. And I think with good reason. He is improving fast and he was impressive at Doncaster. Number 23, involvement did well, coming from well back at Haydock. He's number nine. Star Law was a big eye catcher, held up well back with no room and lost a shoe at Goodwood. He can run well. And Skokuza, number 24, 23, 9, 5, and 24. But for me and Maddie, it's Mickley to rule in the Britannia. Race six of seven on Gold Cup Day at Royal Ascot is the Group 3 Hampton Court Stakes for smart three-year-olds. It is on the round course. It's 2,000 metres, and this is a pretty interesting field. Top of the shop is Al Musmak. What happened at York? I'm not sure, but last year he looked a pretty good horse. Bracken's laugh is interesting, first because his form is strong, and secondly because this has been his main target all through the spring. First look could be very well in at these weights. Can we trust his French derby form. That was on softer ground. J.R. Eby has been progressive this year. King's Gambit, more of him in a moment, but he could not have been more impressive in a hot handicap at Newbury. Portland represents uh, Aidan O'Brien, and under the sun is 12 of 12 on the race card. Let's start with uh, Bracken's Laugh, I think. I, I like this horse to run well here. Richard Hughes has minded him quite carefully. We're going to pick him up at Son Clue. Deep ground, last autumn. Yes, he falters a little into fifth late on, but do bear in mind, it was a group one contest. Uh, the winner, Los Angeles, has franked the form. There's some depth here. And I thought he ran really well at Chester last time when he was second in the D stakes behind Hong Kong bound Capula. I thought he ran very well, Simon. It was really good form. I think it was a real indication of the, the magnitude in which this horse was held to run in Group 1 company last year when he was nowhere near the finished article. Uh, and, of course, Sites dipped considerably on reappearance uh, in that all-weather handicap, but then went to Chester, ran a very good race. My only concern is very different conditions, much faster ground, and he hasn't yet encountered that. I'm going to come to your main fancy in a moment, Maddie, but I want to ask you about this French derby form. First look, earned a rating of 116 for that. That would give him a tremendous chance. But he was 66 to 1 on testing ground in the pre de Jockey Club. Is that form quite what it seems at first glance? I'm not sure it is, Graham. He got quite worked up beforehand. He was incredibly well backed in the market. He had a good position in the race, um, but he couldn't quite make the most of that. I think there are more progressive, more exciting horses to take him on with here. Step forward, King's Gambit, who went to Newbury for what looked a very difficult handicap and he absolutely bolted up. 
I think all of us like this horse with good reason, Maddie. I think he could be one of my best bets of the week, Graham. Um, I think what this horse did there was really impressive. That form's already been boosted by the fourth Persica coming out and winning impressively at Epsom. And uh, King's Gambit only just narrowly beaten by Bracken's Laugh in a very good novice race at Newbury before that. I think he probably should have won that day. I think he can confirm that form. He could be a Group 1 horse in the making. Yeah. And if he is, he should be winning this. I agree. I, I don't think he would have been out of place in the derby. He didn't go to Epsom. He is coming to Royal Ascot. And it's hard to knock his chance, Simon, in any way. It is. He's, his form is most progressive. And uh, what a, a wonderful story that would be for young Harry Charlton, who's taken the licence, of course, from his uh, illustrious father, Roger. This would be his first Royal Ascot winner. We're going to have a quick look at number one, Al Musmack here. Now, he didn't fire first time out this season in the Dante Stakes at York. But if we go back to King George weekend, he ran really well in what looked a useful minor event on the day. Time has shown that it was a very good race because Rosalian won it, Simon. Ancient Wisdom was third. And on that form, Al Musmack is a chance here. Well, it's looking like top class form. And of course, he, he went to the Dante with, with every chance. So Roger Virin, of course, expecting a big run from him. And he just completely misfired and uh, Roger said I don't really know what the problem was he came back he was he just wasn't really himself but he'd gone into the race in a1 condition if we can forgive that and we can forgive any horse a bad run uh, and take him on that previous form then he's right there in the mix I know your main player here uh, any others we should mention before we wrap up a quiet one sons and lovers for Jane Chapel Hyam ran an eye-catching trial for this uh, in the Heron Stakes last time running on strongly in the closing stages that was over a mile he really wants this step up in trip now Jane, of course, won this race in 2022 with Claymore. Keep your eye out for Sons and Lovers. Sons and Lovers, one for the DH Lawrence fan, Simon's neck of the woods. But your first four in the Hampton Court, Simon. Well, for me, it's going to be first look. Uh, Andre Farb, the master French trainer, very selective about the horses he sends over these days. Uh, I think he's found an ideal race for this class dropper. So for me, it's number five, first look. And for the places, number seven, King's Gambit. Number six, JRB. And number three, Bracken's Life. Yes, yeah, seven kings gambit for me, followed by three, nine and five. I wouldn't disagree with Maddie. Kings Gambit could be one of the stars of the week here. I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Kings Gambit on top. I do have a healthy respect for Bracken's Lath, number three. First look five and Jaribi, Jarib, however you pronounce it, six. But Kings Gambit firmly on top for the Hampton Court. Well, the nightcap, the lucky last on Gold Cup Day at Royal Ascot is a fiendishly difficult handicap. It is seven furlongs, 1,400 metres. It is the Buckingham Palace Stakes. You have to go back, get this, to 2005 for the last winner of this race to start a single-figure price. And last year's winner, you'll remember Witch Hunter swooped at 50 to 1 under Jamie Spencer. In other words, it's a tough handicap. Plenty of options. Northern Express is a model of consistency. Awal ran really well over a mile at this meeting last year. Carry the one, swooped late at Newmarket. Russ Collin swooped at Epsom, but he could do with some rain, and I can't see it in the forecast. Percy's lad ran well in this race last year. English Oak from Small Acorns. He is thriving. Bo Pedro gets behind, but comes home strongly, as he did in this race last year. Gorak and Divine Libra and Koi Koi. They all ran very well in a big new market handicap. And further down, 28 Sterling Knight is on the back of a win. So many, so many opportunities to have a bet here. Uh, I'm going to start with last year's race, Simon. Northern Express is tough, honest, and he gives his best every time. Bo Pedro came out of the pack to run really well. Percy's lad was right on the speed and ran well. Northern Express, though, he gave his all. He certainly did, trained by Michael Dodds, who's had his team in great form uh, so far this year. Uh, on this day, 12 months ago, uh, we can see this horse running uh, one of the races of his life. He, uh, for me, just got carried a little bit right in the closing stages, which didn't really help him. He was beaten a length and a half in the end by Witch Hunter, who went on to, uh, to really uh, improve and run some, some super races later in the year. Um, he was first home in his group, uh, effectively. Uh, Northern Express. That form is a year old. More recently, he ran a blinder uh, in the big Hamilton handicap at York, and that puts him cherry ripe for this. Yeah, clear of the rest in second. I remember being at Thirsk, country track in Yorkshire, late last summer, and this horse came past me, and I thought, wow, that's a bit better than your average Thirsk horse. He was called English Oak, and he has bloomed in the last eight or nine months. 
Yeah, I really fancy this horse. He's been on my radar for some of the big handicaps now for a while. We've got a galloping clue, I think, here, Graham. Him finishing second to Rohan. Ask a specialist. Track. Yeah. yeah, Rohan, of course, the Wokingham winner, multiple Wokingham winner, um, who always brings his best to this course. So well done, English Oak, for finishing a good second to him at 16 to 1. Then this season, he was unlucky not to win first time out, but he made amends for that at Haydock last time with a really cosy performance. He's up in the weights. He probably needed to to be in with a chance in a race like this. I think this horse is going to be one to watch in handicaps for the rest of the season. He used to be owned by Starman's owner. That horse won him to win a Group 1. They'll be hoping this horse can go on to do similar things. He's now carrying the Wathnan racing colours. They've had the checkbook out. And he was backed as if... Victory was a formality at Haydock and absolutely bolted up, Simon. He did. He was well placed. He won by four and a half lengths. He could have won by half the track. It was a, a, a performance of some authority. It was only a class three, so this is a steep step up in grade. But this is a horse who's rapidly going the right way. Uh, and I thought that entry that he has in the July Cup was really interesting. Clearly, connections feel that he's blessed with an awful lot of speed. Sheen Murphy may well have been hoping to ride English Oak until Wathnan came along and bought him, but he's got a good ride here. Let me talk to you about Awal, who is fast, aggressive. Let's go back to the Royal Hunt Cup 12 months ago, and he ran a belter on the near side, bang there from start to finish, and just finding no extra late on. He also ran well here in the autumn, but he's been off the track for a fair while. I suspect this has been his target. I think he'll run well. Any other business? Uh, Simon and Maddie, there are so many options here. I'm with you on a while to a degree. I think this horse could be uh, best caught fresh anyway. And he's got a decent draw, I think, in the high numbers. And he is three pounds lower than, uh, than when he, he finished third uh, here last year. So uh, definite possibilities. Yeah, a couple for me. Divine Libra, I think we've yet to see the best of what that horse can do. And Mustabshire, one to keep an eye on. I put up some decent efforts on the clock previously. He needs to put it all together. OK, then we've talked about some main contenders. Let's summarise the Buckingham Palace, Simon. I'm going with a, a progressive handicapper called English Oak, who's got potentially an excellent draw, high draw here. Uh, number 11, then English Oak for me. And for the placings, number two, Northern Express, 26, King's Time. And number three, Awal. I suspect we might all be in agreement here, Graham. We could see a new sprinting star emerge in the shape of 11, English Oak. I'm then going with 18, 4 and 3. How can three people all tip the same horse? in a super competitive handicap. It's because that horse has got a terrifically progressive profile. It's English Oak, Awal, Northern Express and Bo Pedro. It's 11, 3, 2 and 15 in the lucky last on Gold Cup Day.